Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time, 7 Pacific, 9 Eastern. That must mean one thing, that we were successful last Wednesday and we decided to do this again today. So here we are. We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I'm Chris Adams. And this is the tagline, the show where the tagline is the title. Let's talk about some movie stuff. How's everyone doing tonight? Who do we got here? Let's see, Garth in the chat. Who else is here? Sound off. Let us know you're here so we can thank you for being here because we appreciate you being here. As always, any questions, comments, anything like that, streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics and also patreon.com slash cinefanatics. Uh, we can talk about that here in a second. How are you doing tonight, Chris? I am tired for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm tired. I'm tired. Life. Uh, it could still be a little uh, worn out and like brain fried after uh, yesterday, uh, which we'll talk that. about that here in a second some more. Uh, I'm about to uh, plow into one of these Max Protein Insurers because I bought them and I need to use them. And it's got caffeine and that sounds like a good idea right now. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm about to do. Yeah. A little bit of caffeine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, as we were talking about, uh, patreon.com slash cinefanatics, a uh, great place to get inside info on what we're doing. Uh, to catch you up on what's going on real quick, tomorrow night, is it tomorrow night? Today's Wednesday, yes. So tomorrow night at the $5, the do tier, you could join us. I believe we're going to roughly do it at the same time, the 7 or 6 Pacific, uh, 9 Eastern. Tomorrow night will be the... FCL replay, the first class league replay. That this one will be special because it's going to be both of us replaying our matches. So it's going to be a longer, a little bit longer episode than usual. This is the first time both of us were in the same on on the same card. So I'm so excited to rewatch <laughs> the actual matches themselves. Why? As, as I was to rewatch my last match. <laughs> um, yeah, like you only so, want to rewatch the ones you win. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, that's the way you always want to do it. But I think there's some there's some merit to what's going through your head while you were losing, because that's mm -hmm. always fun to know too. Like, at what point were you like, oh crap, oh crap, I'm losing, oh crap. Uh, well, here's the thing. Both the both the matches yesterday were super good, like super they tight were. matches. Uh, it really did. It came down to the last question on both of them. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I think for both of us, like we didn't know what that point of losing was until that last question. But exactly what was going through our head, we'll deep dive into tomorrow night uh on the fcl replay so uh make sure you hop on the five dollar tier uh it's gonna be a lot of fun because we got a lot to talk about there's, there's more so to, talk to talk about, about than just the matches themselves there's We've some got, sort of like behind the scenes planning setup for cut scenes set up for promos all that nonsense you're gonna get all that tomorrow yeah uh we can talk about that here in a second as well um because I do want to dive just maybe, well, uh, you know, we're talking about FCL. Let's do it real, right now real quick. Uh, the other thing I want to do publicly, because uh, we haven't had a chance to say this yet, but, uh, yeah, there was a lot of behind-the-scenes work mm -hmm. that was in effect to make uh, not just the matches, but the entire episode go. <laughs> and it went without a hitch. There was, like, so no smooth. problems, no issues, no nothing. Don't I you love it when that happens? Don't yeah. you love it? I want to shout out everyone who was involved in this. So this was, of course, you got Brad Gilmore, Steph Sabra, uh, Paul Denuzio. Uh, they all were integral in this. Uh, also, big shout out to Dwayne Burke for basically hearing our plans and what, what we were wanting to do and then executing it. And it worked perfectly, like absolutely perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was really afraid that during like the entire time we we're trying to explain what's going on and how it's going to work, that uh, we were going to explain it in such like a confusing way. And it's like, uh oh, we messed up. We didn't explain it properly. Oh no. Yeah, but apparently, like Dwayne's Dwayne's on it. He knew exactly what we were saying. He he executed it, got it done. It was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, looking into the chat, I do again. I see Garth is there. We got Tyler saying, "Hey, Tyler." Uh, <laughs> Maxwell is referencing us as the Adams. Is this? Is this, is this, is this? I hate having like our last name end in an S because that makes it very confusing. Cool. Try having your first name and your last name end with S. <laughs> Chris Adams. Yeah. Uh, Tyler saying, "Hope y'all feel better. You'll get it someday." Uh, we feel fine. Like uh, that was the thing. Like our wa- our once we walked away from the matches, like I think we were both like still like perfectly fine about losing. But yeah, I mean, I you know you you get pissed off when you miss some questions, and like I definitely was like super pissed off like that that I missed that I missed like what was it? There's like three solid opportunities I had in there to seal the deal and win that match, and I'm pissed off that I missed all three of them, but. When you play a good match and like once it's done and like you're behind the scenes with everybody and it's just everyone's like you played such a great match and like you're getting messages from everybody going you played such a great match. It's kind of hard to really feel bad about your loss when like everyone's like, dude, you did great. So, yeah. And a big thanks to everyone who reached out after after the match was done to yeah. congratulate us, compliment us. We we For very sure. much appreciate every single person just checking in and saying, I know like a lot of people, we'll talk about more, but uh, a lot of people like kind of freaked out a bit when uh, it went to like your post interview and you weren't in your chair and everyone actually thought you were just pissed and just up and left and like, yeah, uh, enough of this. I, I'm tired of losing. Uh, yeah. What are you talking about? I was pissed. I did get up and leave. Uh, okay. Anyways, note to self. Whenever you're wanting to take a drink, make sure someone else is talking so there's not silence of just people drinking. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, other, yeah. Other uh, Patreon stuff. Uh, movie watch along for this month is going to be... Thursday the 26th, so a week from tomorrow. Uh, did we actually think of what movie? Or were we doing the poll? Or I think we're going to put out a poll. Let's go with the we're poll. Gonna, we're going to put out a poll. I know two movies. Well, maybe two movies. I know at least one movie that will be on that poll. There, there will be um, four movies on this poll. It's going to be a surprise. It'll be a surprise for you guys. When we put out the poll, you will be shocked. You will be dismayed. Maybe. You will see this poll. It'll be on Twitter. We might even uh, be able to do a poll on Instagram and the stories too. We'll see, but there will be a poll and you will get to choose. And Garth is happy because he's been asking us to do a poll for these for forever. So yeah, we're doing a poll. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be next Thursday, the 26th, uh, same time frame, like six Pacific nine Eastern. Uh, yeah. So we didn't get to clarify this, uh, last week, the, uh, the shifting of tagline to Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, and uh, some of y'all might have heard it's because of my schedule at work has changed. So now we have to adapt. Uh, I'm now working till like nine central. So to rush home and be able to do this by 930 on Tuesday nights just really wasn't working out. I'm off now on Wednesdays and Thursdays and apparently Tuesdays whenever I have an FCL match. Uh, but off on Wednesdays and Thursdays, so it made more sense to do move tagline just to Wednesday and move it up to the six Pacific, nine Eastern, so we could have this nice and done, uh, still kind of early, and still Which, have like a night to ourselves. And all that change is great, but theoretically, it isn't actually that big of a deal now, considering you've got some news to share in terms of what's going on with work and everything now. So. Well, yes. I think so, we still keep it on Wednesday because the situation is not going to last forever, but still, it's kind of funny. Yeah. So uh, this week I got told, actually it was Monday. So it was on Monday uh, I got told or asked if I could work from home. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know, I work at a call center now. I, I used to work at the at a, at a cable store. Uh, but I now work at a call center answering calls. So I've got asked to work from home because we're getting too many COVID cases and they just, they want to get people out of the actual call center building. And so yep. I'll be working here. Uh, so again, like I said on Twitter, big thanks to those who are not vaccinated and choose not to wear their masks and completely ignore what health specialists are saying and whatever. Uh, thanks to y'all. I get to sleep until five minutes before I actually have to work. I'm probably not going to do that, but I could do it. So thank y'all. Thank you very much. 
I, I appreciate that. That being said, <laughs> go get vaccinated, you idiots. <laughs> the struggles, though, with working from home. And like, I actually did have to think about this for a minute. Uh, originally, I liked the idea of working from home. I thought it was cool because I don't have to go anywhere. I'm saving on gas. I'm saving on a ton of time. Like, I don't, I, I typically get up like an hour and a half before I'm supposed to be at work at my desk taking calls. Uh, I don't have to do that now. So all that time that I would spend getting ready, I don't I don't have to do, which I would say, like, in my opinion, I fully believe that if that is your time, I, this probably doesn't make sense. If that is your time that you spend just to be able to go to work, shouldn't work be paying you for that time? Or is that on you that however you want to get ready to be presentable at work, you have to cover? Because, I mean, again, that's an hour and a half of my day that is dedicated to going to work i'm not getting to sit here and watch a movie and relax it's all getting ready to go to work so i feel like that time sh is considered work time it's not my time so uh, right. just weird i don't know anyone else think that way let us know we're going to continue the show talking about movie stuff so <laughs> movies uh the cine fanatics yeah uh what is wake up well yeah wake up Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Anyways, uh, what a, a, anything going on with you personally this week? I, I want to say like both of us, the personal is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, there's not there's not a whole lot. I mean, it's just been uh, a lot of like running around, making sure everything's done, making sure everything's ready for like, FCL on Tuesday. And then now Wednesday's here and we get to... But yeah, it's pretty much just been like making sure is everything that we've got to do is done and ready to go so that we can execute on, that's our favorite word now, execute on Tuesday and uh, get the job done. And so, yeah, nothing else, nothing else exciting has been going on with me specifically. Okay. Well, I've been boring this week. <laughs> well, we've had a lot on our plate. Again, we'll, uh, we'll dive into that tomorrow night. So. $5 tier. $5, y'all. You're going to get some gold for that $5. Just one $5 bill for the entire month, and you're going to get gold, and you'll get uh, to join us for a movie watch along. So that's that's a $5 well spent right there. That's. I mean, it helps us. It helps us out. So, I mean, $5 is great. You know? Yeah. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's dive into uh, something else that we started last week. Uh, we used to do the specific shows covering like the Marvel shows. You did the B Bad Batch recaps. Uh, we're not doing a, a separate one for What If, but we're going to do it on here. So let's jump into our brand new What If breakdown intro. Here we go. Tonight, we ask what is, what was, and what could be. But the most important question of all, what if we like this episode? That's kind of awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, yes, let's talk about some what if. The new episode, episode two of what if dropped today. And what was it? I don't even know what it was actually called. In fact, that's what I think I'm going to start doing like every week. I'm going to ignore what Disney calls it. And we're just going to make up our own title. What if T'Challa was Star Lord? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I guess that was probably the actual title, but okay. Uh, <laughs> what if Peter Quill was from Wakanda? Ooh, that that's actually let's, let's not do that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What if T'Challa was uh, Star Lord? That's a, that's a good one. If you were on the uh, screen right now, I would have taken you off. Yeah, I know. That's why. Anyways, so what'd you think of this episode? <laughs> I thought this was really interesting. Like, first of all, we got to highlight uh, the fact that unless they're doing another one, which I don't believe they are, I believe this is the last time that we get Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa uh, ever since his unfortunate passing. Um, so there was there was something meaningful to this one. I was already like, I know I got on Twitter before I watched it at like 3 a.m. this morning. And I was like, it's 3 a.m., and I'm already like tearing up writing this tweet saying I'm about to watch this episode. And that's the thing is like Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman did such a great job in this episode. I mean, it, he still brought that, that life and that energy to T'Challa that he brings or that he's brought when he was performing as him in live action. So uh, I thought excellent, excellent use of the character, very fascinating concept taking T'Challa and essentially, uh, 
I'm not going to get like too deep into spoilers, I guess, but making the Ravagers so dumb that they picked up the wrong kid was just the, just the greatest little plot plot point here. Uh, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought they did great. I thought there was some really, there were some really interesting and strange choices that they made for some of the characters in, in this episode that was like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll just go with it. It doesn't really make any sense, but sure. Why not? Uh, but other than that, like, are we, are we specifically talking about Thanos? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Thanos. Like they, yeah. they, they made a, I mean, even, even, even Nebula had a weird, interesting choice, but, uh, it, it was still, it's still weird. It's, it's, it's crazy to see the kind of butterfly effect, what they can do with an entire storyline. If that one little thing changed, which in this case would be, what if T'Challa was picked up instead of Peter Quill? Uh, just just that much just knowing that t'challa had like such a huge legacy as star lord at that point is is just fascinating yeah so yeah yeah i like that i like how like there was a lot of stuff that was incorporated into this that was from like the movies as we know like for example uh we're not gonna get too spoilery with this but uh like when we first see Star Lord, uh, mm-hmm. when he's being greeted by Korath in the movie, you got Korath was uh, uh, was interacting with Peter Quill, and he's like, "I'm Star Lord." He's like, "Who?" In this one, Korath like knows everything about Star Lord already, and he's just like uh, he he just like fanboys out at Star Lord. It's just all like head over heels, and like, "Do I need to bow? You're a Lord, aren't you?" And he's like, "You." Like we don't Charles, do that here. We don't do that here. He basically do here. fell back into that. It, he didn't say it specifically that way, but it was very reminiscent of that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the things, a lot of the stuff that they picked up on all felt natural because we had seen those bits and pieces from the other Marvel movies and mm-hmm. they put them all into this. And so, yeah, it felt very natural. And they're doing a beautiful job with the storylines for this. Uh, especially yeah. because, again, what if is based off a of comic book? So there's a lot of comic book storylines that they could pull from, but now we're we're doing brand new storylines off of what's already pre-existed in the MCU, and I I think it's wonderful. Uh, also, big shout out to the collector being just swole as all get out. Good Lord, like that guy. Yeah, Benicio del Toro was not that big. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> But, uh, damn he's stacked <laughs> yeah uh and then of course as we said last week and i think it was even more cemented here with the more like brighter colors the heavier saturation yeah. uh the animation in this show is gorgeous i could watch this show like i want still frames like posted on the wall type of thing this that's how right. good this this looks every frame is a piece of art yeah that's the thing the animation was like great last week for space stuff this week. I thought they're, they're just like at the peak of like, this is, this is, this animation is perfect for what tone and where they're going and what they're the setting and everything. It just, it just works so well. I also like what Garth said here. And this is true to that about 90% of the voice cast are still the MCU actors. I mean, you have big names in this episode that I weren't, I weren't, what I wasn't expecting to show up and actually participate in this. I mean, after we saw the whole thing on Twitter with uh, Dave Patisa going, yeah, I wasn't contacted to be Drax. And now we're like watching the episode and we're seeing who all was actually still a part of it. I'm actually shocked that there's this many MCU actors who are in this show. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, as far as going back, because I did read about like how uh, they apparently they didn't ask uh, Batista and they didn't ask uh, Chris Pratt to yeah. repri- reprise their characters in the show. And I, I can kind of see why. Like, I mean, Chris Pratt, Star-Lord, or, well, his Peter Quill didn't do anything. So there's no reason to pay, like, say, Chris Pratt. Yeah. Someone who's... Like he's a big name actor now. He's top bill type actor. There's no mm-hmm. reason to pay him for his voice in the show. Did he like? Did he even say anything? I don't even remember him having a line. I think, did he? He, I think he had maybe like one line. Yeah, I mean he had, he had a voice actor, so he had one line. Yeah. Uh, and then you had uh, Drax, who did talk. He had quite a bit of lines, but 
like it wasn't like really necessary. I feel like to get Dave Batista for that one, uh, they did. I think they replaced him with uh, I can't say his name, but Fred Tedes Tedescore. Tedescore, yeah, yeah, something like who's who's well known for doing like uh, animated an, animated characters that are big, monster, burly, like the Hulk. He 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 does every version of the Hulk for like probably the past fifteen years. He's a big name voice actor too. He's yeah. just, he's he's done things in like almost every single universe that's had like an animated show of some sort. He's almost had a voice in. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, good. There was a lot of good ones, and then of course, like you had like Seth Green show back up, and yeah, yeah. Uh, any 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 Howard the Duck we could get in the MCU is hilarious. Just still thinking back on how bad uh, his movie was. What are you looking at? <laughs> it's just great when you're trying to do a live show and there's a spider crawling on your wall. Oh, that's is that cool and funny. Hey, bud, welcome to the hey, welcome to hey, the uh, pipeline. Go, go, go! See if you can get bitten by him and get uh, spider power. <laughs> right, I'm pretty sure he's not radioactive, nor will he actually bite me. Hi, welcome to the tagline. I'm Robert Adams, and he's Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peter Parker, and I've been Spider Man for the last fifteen ever years. Since, uh, ever since I was in high school. Ever since I was in high school, there it is. Yeah. I think some 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 form of line like that. Uh, since I was a teenager, or whatever. Uh, that's a reference to the Civil War comics. For those of y'all who don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, I love like. Everything that they did with this "What If" episode, uh, I love. Do we have any idea what the "What If" episode next week is? I don't know. I'm just kind of just flying by, seeing my pants with "What If." I don't have like any predictions, expectations. I'm just sitting back and enjoying whatever ride they want to send us on. Uh, okay. The other thing I wanted to touch on was uh, uh, what's his fit? Jeffrey Wright doing yeah. the voice of Uatu, the Watcher. It's perfect. Like his yeah. voice is perfect. Like I tried to somewhat emulate not only his voice, but also like my general idea of what I think the watcher sounds like uh, for that little intro we played. Yeah. Uh, I, I tried to do that type of voice, but I mean, Jeffrey Wright's voice is just perfect. Yeah. Like I, I'm pretty sure they didn't do like any modulation really to his voice for the show. Maybe a little filter filtering or something, but that's about it. Yeah, it's yeah. it sounds perfect. Love his character. So, anyways, let's go. Let's see what else we have. Let's jump into some news. Yep. Uh, and for that, let's go to our news intro, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. This is what's happening in your world tonight. We apologize for the interruption. Back to you. I just love that it cuts off like back to you. And if y'all have seen that movie, you know what his next word is. <laughs> it's a word we don't say on this channel. <laughs> not on this. We'll say it on every other channel, but not this one. <laughs> Pretty much. Almost. Oh, yeah. It almost feels like that way. Uh, box office numbers. Chris, Ooh. you have some box office numbers for us. Guys, there's been some box office activity this weekend because there were some new movies that came out. And we've got some numbers and they're still looking relatively okay. Considering the situation that we're still for some reason in, in the world right now, still, Eh. but it's, it's fun to say that there's three movies that we can keep track of here. We've got a few movies to look at in terms of uh, having already been out. So let's look at, I like looking at the top 10 in the box office. So Mm -hmm. uh, starting you know, un- understand the three movies that came out this weekend were Free Guy, Don't Breathe 2, and Respect. Uh, all three are hitting different uh, different demographics, different fields. You know, you got your your drama biopic with Respect. That's uh, that's the Aretha Franklin, right? Yes. Yeah. That's, so uh, you got that one. Like, I can't remember who sang, sang the song Respect. <laughs> uh, you got Don't Breathe 2, which hits the uh, horror thriller style market and turkey baster lovers and oh god uh i don't i still don't want to know uh because i didn't (laughs) see the first one um and then you got free guy which hits the people who love movies in general market 
Yeah. Uh, the Free Guy what really was like family friendly, and it, that that probably had the widest yeah, like demographic to catch. So. Yeah. So it's no surprise that Free Guy is number one in the box office this weekend, sitting in at a twenty-eight million three sixty-five gross. That is that's big for domestic for right now, um, especially because our theater when we saw it, it was still pretty, it was pretty decently packed. It wasn't like completely packed, I guess, because they were still doing a little bit of social distancing with some of the seats, but it was still, it was still decently packed. It was probably about halfway full, I would say, if if, yeah. if maybe just under halfway full, probably. Uh, and we went on a Friday night, so that would have been like prime movie going time. That was when people typically would go to the movies, had the world be normal type of situation. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's one thing nice for uh, movies in the theaters. If we choose to go see the theater, it's easy to get tickets. <laughs> I mean. We really haven't had too many problems trying to get tickets to any movie as they're coming out. So For the most part, uh, I think we had a, we had a hiccup with F nine, but otherwise, yeah. yeah, they're selling pretty well. Yeah. That's because we weren't used to the fact that we have to get movie tickets again. So that's that's how that happened. That uh, was also my second time having to buy tickets for F nine because I bought them a year ago. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. It's crazy. Uh, Don't breathe too. Sitting in at the number two spot with a uh, ten million six twenty two. Oh. Uh, number three is not respect. Number three is actually Jungle Cruise still holding in pretty, pretty high because that's, an, again, we're talking about another movie that reaches a wide demographic. Uh, yes, people are still taking their families out to movies. You know, everyone chooses the level of safety for their own family. Um, so that's sitting at 9 million this weekend. Then you got respect at number four. You got the Suicide Squad, Old Black Widow, Stillwater, The Green Knight, and Space Jam: A New Legacy coming in at number ten. So, that box office is uh, it's holding. The thing is, is that you know, if if the pandemic was good and done, this is about how I feel like the box office would look. The numbers would probably be a little bit different. Of course, they would be they would all be higher. But I mean, we talked about you know situations like last week where Suicide Squad was getting you know flack, and it was everyone was saying that it's it's flopped, it's flopped. When the reality is, is it's doing about as well as any of these other movies are, given the current time and situation that we are still in. So, uh, I just like that we have box office numbers to talk about, to be honest. And I think, I think now we're looking at a situation where most movie studios are adjusting their expectations given what's going on too, because mm -hmm. uh, Free Guy was. Free Guy was uh, was picked up, or Disney requested that we get a sequel for it. So that's that's something big to look at when you're looking at a, a weekend box office of 28 million, and the the studio is saying, "Yeah, we want a sequel to this." That is a studio that is adjusting their expectations based on the situation that we're in. So I think these these numbers are uh, they're good. They're good numbers for again for where we're at for what's going on. So. I'm hoping that, uh, again, we get some steady improvements, but that also depends on the world around us and the level of people who aren't being dumb. Yeah. Uh, so looking at, I am looking uh, at Rotten Tomatoes as far as like some of the reviews stuff on it. So like you're saying that Suicide Squad, a lot of people are saying it's a flop. It's 91% on Rotten Tomatoes right now as far as critics go. Uh, audience score 83 percent so in general and that's probably i would say that audience score is probably closer to what i've heard from this uh, uh most everyone i've heard from loves this movie they really like it there's a couple of people that don't like it uh but like we can understand why it might not work for certain people and yeah. that's that's fine with this movie but otherwise uh i'd say suicide squad huge success i'm uh, wondering if fast also if also that audience score is adjusted based on like people's opinions being different in the fact that they were able to watch it on their HBO max for no extra cost. I wonder yeah. if because of that, they're like, you know what? This movie is great because I'm not having to pay extra for it. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think there's something to be said. I mean, I watched it on my computer here at home because we just didn't have time or the money for it at that at that moment. Um, yeah. I, I I feel like there could have been like a better benefit and enjoyment to that movie, seeing some of that on a big screen. I mean, definitely uh, that gigantic Starro on the big screen would have been fantastic to have seen. So. Yeah. Uh, I feel like a part of that was missed out a little, but I mean, the overall enjoyment, I still enjoyed the movie. So uh, easily probably one of my top favorites for this year so far. Absolutely. So that's a, that's roughly about what's going on in the box office right now. It's a uh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, what we're seeing in terms of, you know, what we can see and what's, what's going on. So again, hopefully we uh, get some steady improvements and, you know, maybe by the end of this year, maybe into next year, we see, you know, the box office getting closer and closer to where it was, where it once was uh, at the beginning of 2020 into 2019. So, yeah. Uh, so looking forward on what movies we have coming out. Uh, I don't think there's really anything major coming out this week. I know uh, next week we have uh, finally the uh, the new Candyman movie, which is not, doesn't really look like it's a reboot. It does look like it's an extension of at least the first Candyman movie. Um, so I want to mm-hmm. say I want to say Reminiscence and Protege come out this week. Reminiscence is going to be on oh. HBO Max, so you don't have to go to a theater to see that one. You can watch it on HBO Max. Protege, I think, is only a theatrical release. So if you want to see that. You have to take yourself to a theater if you, again, if you feel safe doing so. Protege looked interesting. It looks like it's definitely like playing like in the world of John Wick. So from, from the studio that brought you John Wick. So yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, that was one with uh, Maggie Q and uh, Michael Keaton, right? That does that does yeah. look very interesting. Um, yeah. And reminiscent, reminisce. Is it reminisce or reminiscent? Reminiscence. Reminiscence. Whatever. I know I yeah. stood in front of a poster and talked about it, used it as a pun, but still can't say it. Uh, yeah, that one's kind of in- slightly intriguing, uh, just because I always, I'm always game for a Hugh Jackman movie where he's screaming like "Bring me the girl" or "Find the girl" or something. He seems to do that in all of his movies. So, yeah, where is she? That kind of where thing. is she? That's it. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I was looking at is coming up soon. We've got uh, Shang Chi coming out into theaters, and Shang Chi just had its huge uh, premiere a couple of days ago. So, looking at what the reviews and early reactions to it, uh, everything I've seen seems to be seems to be pretty positive. Yeah, there's so the the reactions and everything coming out of the premiere right now have been super, super positive. Uh, I know that, you know, we, we've, we've seen from like people that we know, people we talk to who have said that, you know, it is just as good, if not one of the best uh, origin stories that we've seen in the MCU so far. So if that's not one of like the biggest, uh, raving glowing reviews for that movie i don't know what would be i'm super pumped for it i think it looks like it just looks like it's going to be a ton of fun and i know that in terms of like representation and everything there is a large demographic that is super super excited for this movie and i'm excited for them to be excited for this movie too especially after the bs and the crap that that demographic has had to go through this within this last year jeez so I'm trying to say reminiscent, and Garth says it's evanescence. <laughs> nice. Just nice. Garth, just don't call me when you're sober or whatever. Just whatever that song is. Anyways, uh, I was trying to make a pun, didn't work. Sorry, Garth. Uh, so I am looking over like some of the quick reviews. Uh, and what's funny is like I'm pulling up like a, just a news article. I guess well, this makes sense. I forgot this news article is on Collider, so it's like pretty much everyone that we know that we would like go to for opinion. So like we got positive reviews from Perry Nemiroff, uh, uh, Stephen Wontraub, uh, Frosty from Collider, yeah. uh, Wendy Lee like liked it, Jacqueline, Dorian like pretty much everyone that we've ever heard of as being an opinion of it all loves it. Uh, yeah. But like, the biggest not, one that I, I, I look to, the biggest yeah. one that I look to is uh Koi, Koi Jandro. Mm-hmm. When Koi gets on Twitter and just 
gushes about a comic book movie even though like you get the bias he's coming straight out of a premiere premieres are exciting the the atmosphere is is huge it's just fun to be a part of a premiere and just you know when you take a picture with kevin feige and then you go into the movie that might influence your opinion a little bit i get it but at the same time i do trust coy's opinion when it comes to a comic book movie and if he comes out of it saying absolutely fantastic i feel like it's going to be absolutely fantastic yeah yeah, so I'm eager for that. I can't wait to do a review for that. That will be up uh, as soon as we're able to get to a theater to see it, which probably won't be until it actually gets released. Uh, yeah, because we're not special yet and we don't get the early screenings. So <laughs> please subscribe and follow and share so we can become special so we can go to early screenings because, you know, that's all that matters in life is early so, screenings. So we can take pictures with Kevin Feige also. Yeah, I want a picture with Kevin Feige. I mean, that's the mastermind of all masterminds. So, anyways, uh, let's. Uh, we got a couple other things that uh, I want to uh, fly through real quick. Uh, big news today is that Anthony Mackie was given the keys or a contract to do Captain America Four. I love this idea. This essentially, right now, given the storyline of the MCU, this will be the first Captain America movie that does not have Chris Evans in it. So I'm kind of eager to see what kind of a storyline uh, we're going to get with the Falcon version of Captain America, especially after his his long monologue that he was giving to the government at the end of uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we expected to see. They set it up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We knew, I mean, they even set it up in Endgame. We knew this was going to happen at some point. It was just a matter of when the deal was going to be sealed and all that. So I'm excited. I'm ready for Captain America 4, and I'm ready to watch everybody whine and cry about why this Captain America will bomb, and then I'm going to be ready to watch it do fantastic and mm -hmm. laugh in the faces of all those people. Well, um, so real quick piece of news for this one though. Like I thought this was already announced. Like after watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, I thought this was already given. Like supposedly this was news that just came today and I originally saw this and I just clicked through and I was like, "Oh, okay." Like I knew I knew this and then move on. Yeah. But no, this apparently was big news today. I was like, "Okay. Y'all yeah. already did this by having him in his own TV show." So uh Anyways, talking about what's coming up and what's being delayed, uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, God, I hate that title, uh, is being pushed back to October 15th for its release <gasps> no! date instead of the end of September. But now there's also talks again that it could be pushed back even more. So... I'm kind of hoping it comes out sooner or later. Just, again, I'm a huge symbiote fan. Those have been some of my favorite characters in the comics, and I would love to see how they do those characters justice. They look like they are fixing mistakes that they made on Cletus Cassidy from the first movie, and they're fixing them in this one. And I'm, I'm overall, I feel pretty happy with how Carnage looks. I'm just kind of disappointed that for the general audience, this isn't this isn't really meaningful. If you don't know who the character of Carnage is, you have no reason to care, and your general audience is like, oh, okay, it's Venom fighting another symbiote. He did that in the first movie. Why do I care? But Oh, cool. This one's red. Dope. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping it's good. Uh, I have a little bit of faith in it just because I was I was expecting much worse for the first movie, and it turned out to be pretty decent so yeah yeah uh so i mean i mean i, I got i got nothing i'm just let's get this one out <laughs> at some point yeah. you know uh also, also coming I, out my, yeah, my thought, sorry my thought on that real quick is pick a date and stick with it let's not do this <laughs> well, in two weeks we're gonna release it and then two days later well you know maybe maybe we'll release it in a month and then three days later well you know what maybe two months Pick two months from now. Stick with that date. Just just go with it. And we are roughly, I would say, in my opinion, we are roughly at the time where you need to be releasing movies and you just release them. Yeah. If it was a good time or not, so be it. I mean, the world needs to continue on. And I get it. Uh, I'm not a person who has any money invested in a movie other than what I buy my movie ticket for. 
So I'm not one of these producer people that's like, no, I want to delay it so we can potentially release it when health is a little bit better and more people come to the theater, more people buy tickets. I get the business aspect of it. But for the realistic nature of how movies get released, it's about time to like just stick them in the theater, let them play, and hope but for the best. Especially in a situation where some of these movies aren't being released on a streaming service where you can watch them from home, get them in the theater, let them have their run, get them out of the theater, get them to home viewing. If you're not mm -hmm. releasing it on a streaming service, let's get its run through the theater so it can get out so people can watch it. That way, those who don't feel safe or can't go to a theater right now do feel like they can still get in on it at a relatively quick pace. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of release dates, uh, we were, we were given the first, the first release date for the next Fast and Furious movie, uh, Fast and Furious 10. Look, we're all going to make the joke. Fast 10, your seatbelts. Yes. Fast 10, your seatbelts, uh, apparently is going to arrive April of 2023. They better not call uh, it that. <laughs> I know at this point, like at what point, uh, good question here. At what point do you just let the pun be the pun and you move forward with it? I mean, we got Fate of the Furious. What, like, it makes complete sense to call this Fast 10, your seatbelts. And I've heard a lot of people reference that and everyone referencing it, thinking that they're the ones who are coming up with it for the very first time. And they're not, <laughs> I'm almost certain some studio exec or writer came up with it years ago, whenever they were thinking that there's a you, possibility we might get to a 10th movie. You know, for a fact, it's not going to be fast 10 years. It's not going to be fast 10 anything. It's going to be fast and furious, but the I and the O in furious is going to be a one and a zero. Yeah, and that's going to be a title. It's going to be Fast Fear 10 Us. That is exactly what it's going to be called. And we're all going to end up calling, calling it, it that. Much like, calling the, it now. much like the Fant 4 Stick, which everyone actually calls Fan 4 Stick, but it's actually Fant 4 Stick if you look at the spelling, whatever. Like, we're going to, yeah, it's going to be what Fast and Fear 10. Fast us. and Furtinius. Furtinius? Furtinius. Yeah. Fast and Furtinius. <laughs> Rachel says, of course I walk into a middle of a pun. I mean... No one claims <laughs> it's a good pun. Garth, it's going to be Fast 10. They have to drive backwards and go back in time to say so. You know, here's the thing. That might actually be the plot. I mean, I that's, that's actually one of the next things. Like, we already, like, barely touched upon going to outer space and F9. It's time to, like, start messing with time and alternate realities and this... This is exactly how we get the crossover with Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. They're going to go back in time and they're going to go back into the Jurassic period. It's not going to be really Jurassic Park. It's going to be more like Jurassic the world, uh, but still Jurassic world. You remember back like in the 2000s when like vampires and zombies were all the thing in movies like we just we can't get enough vampires we can't get enough zombies uh we got like twilight world war z all of these movies came flooding the theaters now we're gonna get multiple realities <laughs> thanks marvel <laughs> yep i don't even know Multi if it's really marvel to blame is there anyone else who's really starting this DC. before Did, DC. is dc i know dc did it with flashpoint no. but like flashpoint the movie hasn't really come out yet they talked about it. They just didn't act on it quick enough, and Marvel acted on it a lot quicker. Yeah, because that's what—that's so. how a Marvel do. <laughs> that's how Marvel do. That's how the Marvel do. Is that Frank? I haven't seen anything from him lately. Anyways, nah. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Next news story. Uh, this one I like a lot. Uh, we got a behind the. Well, it's not really behind the scenes. It's a Vanity Fair photo released for them filming clerks three uh clerks three is currently in production right now and this is the first cast photo and nobody looks happy to be at work that day except maybe elias there on the left i don't think any of them are <laughs> supposed to be there honestly yeah uh especially dante and randall they just look why are we here like Be becky becky seems okay with it although she looks like she would rather be like playing with lightsabers at this point but now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I seem to remember it's been a while since I've seen Clerks too. Mm -hmm. I know Randall at least was working at the movies. Didn't Dante get a job at movies also? Yes. weren't weren't they both working at movies? Why are they back well, at the Quick Stop? You don't remember the end of Clerks too? I guess I don't. 
yeah, at the end of Clerks two, they uh, they were talking about doing so, like moving on with their lives, and uh, Randall uh, pitched the idea of reopening the Quick Stop because it burnt down at the beginning of Clerks two, uh, and then they uh, they used the money from Jay and Silent Bob that they got from their uh, movie their movie money to fund it. Uh, the yeah. thing I want to point out here before I remove the picture off the screen is Elias over here. Who he looks like he's seen some stuff since the last time we saw him, and that's not really like a, a like a going after him as a person, the actor. Because anyone who saw me in high school and now saw me now would probably think that I've been through some stuff or seen some things. But does anyone else think he looks like he could be like related to Ted Lasso? <laughs> He kind of looks like uh, what's his face here, Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, I love the fact that we get an image from Clerks Three because Clerks Three is what is one of the movies I've been waiting for for a long time. I love the idea that like Dante and Randall have been out there, they've uh, seen the world, worked at a movies, now they're coming back and they've accepted the reality of that their whole life they're just clerks doesn't mean that they still like you the common customer stop bothering them they're just there to be there but I, i'm eager to see like how this what the storyline of this yeah oh yeah robert's been through some stuff yeah i, I got stories um anyways I mean, yeah it's like good that. it's good it's good to see everybody it's good to see everybody back i mean uh i thought for a brief period of time they're uh Randall wasn't going to be in the movie, but it's good to see him back too. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's the one Jeff who's Anderson. been like, yeah, he's the one that's been kind of like flighty on being able to commit to these projects lately. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, Kevin Smith, uh, obviously talked him into it and Randall is probably the greatest character out of the entire, in my opinion, the entire like clerks, almost the entire, uh, view ask universe. Wow, that's big. That's big talk. I put him up there, like uh, maybe like Banky, Banky being right below that from Mallrats, Jason Lee's character. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I love Rand. Randall is like the quintessential character, and I think that was actually who, like, his character was based off of Kevin Smith. Like Kevin Smith was originally going to play Randall, just my, because my, of that. So that's why he has all the best lines. Yeah, my favorite is still Silent Bob because <laughs> he doesn't say anything, and when, and he, when he, talks, he does. Though, he and when says he does, like, yeah, he says like the most, yeah. Uh, the chasing Amy story is just so good. So, yeah. Uh, so anyways, let's move on to our big news story for the night. Uh, we purposely news. didn't uh, touch upon. Yeah. Well, we purposely didn't touch upon the recap of what movies we have seen this past week. Cause uh, being busy with the FCL and everything else, we've only really seen one new movie this past week. And that was free guy. Uh, Chris, thoughts, feelings, opinions, free guy. Well, my thoughts, feelings, and opinions is that one of us got the memo today to wear a blue shirt for this review. Yeah, there he goes. No, we'll, we'll just sit here and wait. It's cool. Yeah, keep talking. Bam. Nah. No, we're just going to wait. I don't we're know. all here waiting for you. We're just going to wait on you. How are you guys doing? Not really vamping here. He's he's at least got the blue light in the background. I'll give him that. There it is. That it's all familiar. Wrinkly it's all wrinkly because I pulled it out of like the dirty laundry hamper. So. <laughs> oh, gross! You're so gross. Anyway. Oh, it's okay. I didn't do anything in the shirt except like chase you out at a gazebo and have a nice little tizzy with you out there. Yeah, we're not talking about that right now. We're on yeah. our channel. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Anyway, so I apologize for that. Shut up. So the free guy review is that I loved this movie. This is one of my favorite movies of the year so far. I mean, In the Heights is my number one right now. This is number two, easily, easily. And we're not going to do like any like real spoilers or anything on this. So you know, if you're in the chat and you haven't watched it yet, no worries. Uh, but there was just so much fun stuff just packed into this movie. And not only was there so much fun stuff packed in the way they, here's the favorite word again, the way they executed the story, the way they 
they laid everything out and introduced us to the world and the rules of the world and what's happening and why it's happening. All of that was a lot better than you would actually expect for this movie. Cause you go into this kind of questioning like, eh, is the plot going to be, is it going to make any sense? Are we going to be in like a super convoluted world where everything's kind of just throwing it, you know, you're throwing, uh, was it, you're throwing a bunch of wet noodles at the wall and you're going to see what, uh, what sticks and what doesn't that's kind of a situation. not a proper way to cook your pasta, by the way. That's no. It's true. Anyway. So, I mean, it's not. They actually had a lot of heart and a lot of planning going into this movie for exactly what they wanted to do. And I, there's not much about this movie, if anything at all, that I disliked. I think they nailed literally everything all the way through. So, my opinion is I really freaking love this movie. Yeah, this movie was great. And I know you said no spoilers. And I know we have at least Garth in the chat hasn't seen it. Uh, yeah. I will go ahead and spoil something. Uh, so, Garth, careful. Uh, this movie was filmed in Boston. I don't know <gasps> if Garth knows that. But uh, it was filmed in Boston, apparently in the summer of 2019. Uh, so, spoilers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. uh, apparently Garth already knew that. Uh, so yeah, I, I loved like how this movie was put together, uh, watching the previews, hearing the synopsis of this, that I, I like, I'm not a big video gamer, but I know what, uh, an, an NPC is a non-playable character. I get what their point in a video game is. I played enough video games to, to see NPCs just sitting there doing a uh, algorithmic pattern of just walking back and forth and mundane tasks or something. Yeah. But I did. I, I couldn't figure out like the logistics of how exactly an NPC would be would turn around and be like a main character in the video game realm of codes and everything, ones and zeros. It doesn't make any sense. But they the storyline for it and how it's explained, like even though this is like an absurd, like not realistic movie, it made sense to a yeah. casual moviegoer who doesn't put together video games himself. This made sense, and the acting by Ryan Reynolds... Here's the thing with Ryan Reynolds I, that I'll touch upon. Every time I see him, yes, he had... Ryan Reynolds has his own acting style now. Yeah, uh, I've seen other characters do it. Like, Chris Evans used to do that same kind of acting, that witty style, the quick comebacks and stuff. He used to do that in all of his movies, like the Fantastic Four movies, his Human Torch was like that. Uh that is the Ryan Reynolds style and Ryan Reynolds does it like in almost all of his movies now. Deadpool. He's yeah. Deadpool. He is it's Deadpool, but what's great is he can do that in all these movies and I can still see each individual character. I didn't watch this movie and think he was Deadpool. I thought he was guy. Yeah. Whatever his character guy, whatever. Guy. His name's guy. Yeah. Yeah, like I actually believed that he was guy and it works like his acting, the, his style, just everything put together. Beautiful. The movie was written perfectly. Yeah. All the like beats and everything they did. I thought, I, was, I thought it was gorgeous. The graphics, the style, er, all, all the elements put together. Again, yeah. I'm not a big video gamer, so not really a huge uh, demographic for it, but loved it. Yeah. And they, they did some great stuff too. They involved uh uh, a lot of big streamers out there got got a moment to shine in, in the in the movie in various like cameo type roles, which really added to the uh, the depth of the world in terms of making this fit in with our actual reality in terms of what gaming and everything looks like online nowadays. So I think they, including them, was a was a stroke of genius. It was great. It's you know parents are going to bring their kids to this who watch Twitch, who watch these streamers. Uh, play games and stuff and the parents are gonna be like i don't know who any of these people are the parents are gonna be like who's jack said the guy who's pokemon i don't know who these people are and the kids are gonna be like i love her i love him yay uh ninja you know all these all these people and it's 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 great to see like that kind of come into play a little bit too uh i think that just adds to just the realistic nature of what they were trying to create in terms of this is this is an actual video game that could exist in the actual world and just the level of like parody that they had on in this game, in this game world also, and how it's uh, 
how it relates to like video games that have actually existed in real life, like Grand Theft Auto and all that. I think that was that was that was like pitch perfect comedy in terms of what they were doing with with all that stuff. I thought it was hilarious. The movie itself made me like die laughing multiple times. Uh, and then of course it's got so much heart behind it, and you know you can you can tell that you know Ryan Reynolds was huge on producing this and making sure this happens and everything, and did did a fantastic job on just ensuring that it was a a movie that's fun to watch and and fun to enjoy. It's a nice big blockbuster summer comedy. So also <laughs> Robert's not I a am... big video gamer, but Chris is. Follow him at Twitch at twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Thank you, Garth, for that I'm, shout out. I, I am also on yeah, I am also on Twitch. I was not asked to be in Free Guy. Uh mostly because of two <laughs> can't, reasons. Can't tell why. <laughs> mostly because of two reasons. One I wasn't on Twitch at that time. And two, nobody even knows who you are. <laughs> everybody who's in our chat right now are the people who watch me on Twitch. So, yeah. So <laughs> nicely done there. Uh, overall. Yeah, I agree. I think even though this is one of those movies that when it comes out, I don't feel like it typically gets high reviews, especially from us. We typically look at it like, yes, this is a good uh, a good fun popcorn flick seat filler you leave like thoroughly you and en you enjoyed your time there but it's nothing that you're gonna really rave about type of thing yeah i think this kind of broke the mold of that and this is in the top tier echelon of those types of movies uh so i would say walking away unless you have anything else you want to uh rate it yeah i mean what did i I already put this on the letterbox. I think I gave it the four and a half out of five there. So the equivalent here would be what a nine out of 10, nine out of so. 10. Yeah. Yeah. And I did uh, the four out of five. So eight out of 10. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this movie. I think this one's also one of those up there with as one of my favorites for the year so far. Uh, just if you get a chance, go see it. Uh, this is one of those I could also see, like watching it on the big screen, I definitely think helped because of some of the graphics and the way that so, some of it was done and shot. Yeah, uh, it, this is one of those that I'm gonna miss, like not being able to see it on the big screen again after its theatrical performance. But also, it's just gonna be just it's it's gonna be a blast just to watch it over and over again later on too. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of like little stuff in the background to see oh, yeah. and catch. I know uh, right before it came out, Ryan Reynolds uh, released a video on his YouTube channel, uh, like giving thanks to two of the background people in the movie. Like he's yeah. a background character in the video game. He was giving thanks to two of the background extras in the actual movie and kind of like putting a spotlight on them, which was brilliant. Like this is something that I feel like that everyone is possible capable of thinking up, but no one does, and Ryan Reynolds does and executes. There's yeah. that word again. Like so <laughs> very well. Yeah. Uh I think we've said that word more than y'all tonight. Um I don't so, know about that one. That one's kind of hard to do. <laughs> right. So yeah, exactly. To your point, what I really enjoyed about this is that you know, there there are moments where you can just look in the background and see some funny stuff happening. There was a part where he was at a ATM and he was looking at the ATM and if you look in the background you see someone else's like player character or whatever just running up and jumping up against a wall and just continually like running into a wall or whatever just happening in the background it's like not even really calling your attention to it it's just a person like boom boom jump boom, boom. and I was like <laughs> what's happening back there there's like no rhyme or reason for that it just adds to the depth of the world it's hilarious yeah uh, cause if you've ever played, what are those like mul massive multiplayer where they were RPG or something like that? Yeah. Like if you ever play those, you usually see some like numb nuts in the background doing some kind of stupid thing like that. Like they're trying to like crack a code and get into some secret level or something they're, or they're just drunk and playing video games. They're, they're doing like a combination of like buttons on the controller, which is causing their character to just do the most random thing, like running into walls and whatnot. Yeah, like it's just what, what, why, dude? What, what, what's the point? Uh, so yeah, you usually do see that. There it is, massive multiplayer role playing game. Jeez. So, so you have like you have the RPGs, you have just the general MMOs, mass multiplayer online, 
games, um, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it, 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 it touched on like all of those and, and different aspects of all of them. Someone bring me a side-scrolling Mario game, and I'll be happy. That's what that's what we need—a live-action Super Mario Brothers movie because no one's ever made one, uh, and I need oh, it to be like a side-scrolling movie the entire time. <laughs> that would be funny. Oh. <laughs> I, th- I think that, like, I, I get the movies that are like one one track, one shot the entire way through. Great, great, fascinating concept for cinematography. I think your idea there would get very old very quick. Just a side scroll. You only see like the side of Mario the entire time. <laughs> oh no, what am I going to do? I don't know why I do like a terrible <laughs> Italian accent, it's but me, Mario. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's, it's me, me. I'm, I'm offending a bunch of people. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Red the bola. Yeah. Jim Carrey. And... Oh good lord. Yes, man. Anyway. Yeah. So that's uh that's our uh, free guy review, guys. It's uh fantastic, really great. You should see it. We rated it very high. If you have a chance to go see it in the theaters and you feel safe and you want to go do so, I highly recommend you do so. Otherwise, as soon as you get a chance to watch it, whether it's home release or what have you, I recommend watching it. Enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not getting canceled. That's I'm gonna cool. hold it down myself. This whole channel. <laughs> Garth, I'm not going to get canceled. People need to watch me to begin with for me to be able to get canceled. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes bad press is good Good press, right? That's not, that's I mean, I don't take any press. Right that's how now. that goes, right? That's how that goes? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyways, uh, so that's going to do it for tonight's uh, tagline. I know a little little more streamlined than we've done in the past, but uh, we've got stuff to do. So... <laughs> Uh, let's move on. Let's close this show down again. Uh, talking about what we have coming up tomorrow night at the $5 tier. Join us for the FCL replay tomorrow night. That's going to be at six Pacific nine Eastern. Uh, we will be going over both of our matches. So it's going to be a little bit longer episode. Uh, so that's two, two episodes. You get to watch us, uh, go over and all the other crazy storiness that happened with that. Uh, that'll be some, yeah, I know I'm making up words at this point. Yeah. See, that's what $5 gets no. you. No, what? it's that you're back here doing hand gestures and no one can see you because you have an image. I'm all like crazy storiness. <laughs> yeah. And no one can see me. So guys, I know that you can't see anything that I'm doing right now, but, <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, $5 this month on Patreon. Join us. You get that. You will get the movie watch along, which we're going to have a poll up on Twitter at CineFanatics MLP. Make sure you hop on that Patreon tier. We've got fun stuff coming. Movie watch along will be Thursday next week, uh, the 26th uh, at 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern. Keep an eye on Twitter. Vote for the movie that you want to see us see, I guess. Uh, yes, Vernon. We'll call out what Vernon says. Stuff to do. Hmm, wonder what that is. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to catch us over on a Fans View uh, YouTube channel. Vernon, feel free to plug that with like the YouTube channel and stuff. Uh, oh, we right. will be over there talking about FCL again. So I believe that uh, that will be on. That will go up public on Friday. So yep. yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun uh, being able to talk about FCL over there on that channel. I just love the FCL. It's, it's so much fun being a part of that. So I love being fickle fickle. Yeah. The fickle. I love the fickle. Uh, also guys, uh, part of the Patreon. If you join even at the $1 tier to help us out, you will have access to discord. We have a lot of fun conversations and stuff going on on discord. Hop on that. Join us over there. Watch along Twitter. We've got that all covered. Anything else that we want to drop before we end this? That's it, guys. Just make sure you're liking and subscribing and all that stuff. You know, it helps, it helps us keep the uh, the lights on on this channel when you hit that subscribe button. Yeah, make sure, guys, uh, that, that, that little subscribe button down there, it's, it's red. If it's red right now, if you click it, you can actually change its color magically to gray. So you should definitely try that out. Um, if you haven't done so yet, it's it's I promise you it's the best magic trick in the world. Super cool. Yeah, it's super cool. It. it just goes from red to gray if you click it. So give that a shot, guys. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you thought about the uh, magic color changing button. And uh, on top of that, you know, we're going to see you next week. We'll be back with another tagline next week. We're uh, we're doing all sorts of stuff. 
yeah. No other live streams, I think, other than what's going up on our Patreon. So for Cinefanatics lovers, that yeah, I like that one too. So, anyways, uh, that's gonna do it for tonight. Thank you, everyone who is watching us live in the chat. We appreciate you being here. Thank you for making every Wednesday night a Cinefanatics night. <laughs> Blockbuster? Like, like, yeah. I actually kind of like that. Thank you for making Wednesday night a Cinefanatics night. Now that Mid we're tonight. no longer making now that we're no longer making Tuesday nights a Cinefanatic night. Guys, uh, whenever whenever you're done with the stream, make sure that you're being kind and rewinding. Yeah. And then watch it all over again. And then watch it all over again. Anyways, that's gonna do it for tonight. So thank y'all for watching. As for myself, as for my brother. Thank y'all for being here. We will see y'all hopefully tomorrow night. $5 tier. Hop on there. See you later. Good night. Yeah.